Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. It's Saturday, September 17th, and it's opening day of the urban hunt. Feels good to be in the tree. Jared and I got out here early this morning. I just shot a doe about 20 minutes ago. Right when we were getting ready to do our opening interview this morning, we had a group of deer come in, a doe, a couple fawns, and a buck, but we didn't get a shot at those deer. There's a hunter probably 80 to 100 yards up from us that got a shot at those deer, and then 20, 30 minutes later, another group came in. It was a little bit of a rush. They came in kind of quick. We couldn't see with all the leaf cover, um, but she dropped right there, so. Got a couple more uh, hunts we're gonna hunt this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon, and the goal with this urban hunt is just to reduce deer numbers, so we're gonna shoot as many does as we can. I do have a buck tag in my pocket for town uh, that I earned last year, so, so it feels good to be in the tree and get the first kill of the year. Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Realtree, Muddy Outdoors, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Scott Archery, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Easton Arrows, RTP Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Deer Grow, Ozonics, Wilderness Athlete, Grizzly Coolers, Redneck Hunting Blinds, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. It's September 18th, Sunday afternoon. We're doing the urban hunt again this year. We started yesterday morning. We uh, had a nice hunt yesterday morning. Uh, got one doe. For those of you that don't know the urban hunt here uh, in Iowa, it starts a couple weeks early. And the primary goal of the hunt is to eliminate does. I've been doing it for about seven years now. And I usually shoot somewhere between five and eight does each year. I do have a buck tag in my pocket that's specifically for this depredation zone. While we're waiting on the deer to start moving here, we figured we'd give you a quick update on kind of what we have on camera so far on the various farms we're going to be hunting this fall. Um, one interesting thing is probably the top, what Mike and I are considering the top four bucks we are looking to find back this year on the two main farms that we hunt uh, have yet to show up. Kind of exciting but a little nerve-wracking nerve uh, at the same time, just wondering what, what happened to these deer. You know, some of our main targets aren't, aren't showing up yet. So with that being said though, we have had a, a ton of really good deer that have shown up this summer, I'd say about a dozen or so good deer, mostly four-year-olds that you know aren't on the hit list this year, but uh, deer that have made good jumps from last year to this year and uh, just good deer to at least find back for now. On my farm, I'm lucky enough, I do have at least one, uh, what I would consider a big shooter. I actually filmed in velvet. I've got lots of trail camera pictures to him. A deer uh, I named Hoss. I just can't find him from last year. I'm really not sure. Whatever, If it's a deer that I know from last year, it, he sure did make a lot of change. And it was pretty exciting. Just a couple weeks ago, freshman showed back up. He's a three and a half year old this year and he's just looking unbelievable. So um, I'm gonna be talking to the neighbors and praying that he can uh, make it another couple years, but he's an exciting buck to be watching. And we're sure over these next two, three weeks, <clears throat> we'll have some of these deer hopefully show up, um, but also some other new deer. I'm sure we uh, are going to be hunting one one different farm we didn't hunt last year. Um, some good deer, I'm assuming, will show up on that place as well. So as these deer start popping up on camera, we start finding them back. We'll we'll bring them to you guys uh, either here or on the video blog. You can follow along there as well. So. We got about an hour and a half left tonight. We're gonna try to be quiet and hopefully the deer start moving pretty soon. Oh, I can't believe it. I think I just shot that big nine that I was after. He is awesome. <sighs> it's mid-September and I'm back here checking out one of my small properties that I'm going to be hunting this fall. This is the same piece that I hunted almost all of last season. 
So what I'm doing this year is I'm taking all of what I learned last fall and applying it to this season. So right now I'm standing in the same food plot that I was able to kill my buck in in early January last year. What I learned last year just from watching my trail cameras is a lot of deer started to use this food plot once we got our first hard frost. I didn't have a whole lot of activity here until the later part of October, throughout November, and definitely into December and January. So what I did is I came back in here after the deer season last fall and I frost seeded Frigid Forge Pure Trophy Clover. My intention there was to provide a place for the deer to eat throughout the spring and summer and then till that under and plant my turnips. The plowed on clover adds nitrogen to the soil and I really think it benefited me a lot this year because my turnip plot did not look nearly as good last fall as it does this season. So I'm excited about that. I think it worked out really well. And another thing that I'm gonna do is bring in a redneck soft-sided blind mounted to a trailer and I'm gonna put it on the east end of this food plot. That was my biggest um, thing that I had to overcome this season was to find a way to hunt this plot on a westerly or northwest wind. There's not any trees on the east side of the plot and the redneck soft side of blind is perfect for the job. Once that's done, I'm gonna keep the pressure off here and just slip in here maybe one or two times in late September, check a camera and figure out a game plan for October. Another stand that I'm really looking forward to hunting this year is the open gate. And that's a stand that is on the complete opposite end of this farm. It's on the east side and it sets up really well, uh, especially for the rut. Just talking about how things were starting to feel good. That buck, I'm sure, was coming in here to freshen up that scrape. Basically what we have is a draw that runs through the entire east end of this, of this farm at the south end of it where it leads into an open what is now planted in beans. What I'm doing this year differently is I planted Frigid Forge Pure Trophy Clover in a little strip right in bow range of my tree stand. So I'm really hoping that that's gonna provide a little bit more incentive for deer to use that open gate and that would just provide a chip shot for me. The last spot that I'm really excited about, and this is a, a food plot that we put in kind of at the last minute, I'm calling it the kitchen. It's in the northeast corner of this farm and the reason I'm so excited about it is because I really feel like we're in their kitchen. We're right where those deer live. There's a lot of bedding around there and last year when I checked it during the, the during shed season, there were so many trails that came together right there. Basically, we have a downed fence and those deer hopped the, the barbed wire fence, cutting into the, the draw and working their way around back towards the open gate. So what I did is I came in with a push mower and a push behind rototiller, knocked down all the tall weeds, tilled it up and got some big and beastie and wild game buffet in the ground right in that spot. It's not a very big plot. It's maybe a quarter of an acre at most, but I'm really looking forward to it because it sets up so well. I have perfect entry and exit, and I really think that's gonna be a really solid spot to hunt during the rut. So that's pretty much how this farm sets up. Last year when I first got permission here, I hung a pile of tree stands and found myself only hunting out of one or two of them. So I pulled a lot of them down and just enhanced the spots that I found myself hunting last year to make them even better for this season. I don't have a lot on camera right now, but that was about par for the course last year. Around mid-September, late September is when I finally started to get some good buck pictures and I had a lot of great hunts in early October. So I'm really hoping I have that same success this year and I'm definitely counting down the days till October 1st. In this next segment, I'm gonna talk about how I prepare for the hunting season. A lot of times I don't get my bow out until, oh, it'll be sometimes into the end of August, even the first part of September. I just get so busy and I would like to be a year-round shooter, but I'm not. So I'm probably a lot like many of our viewers, is I've got to get up to speed fairly quickly so that I can start to really fine tune my shooting before I get into the hunt. First step for me is just to shoot enough arrows where my strength is back so that I can hold that full draw uh, with total relaxation. The next challenge, and this has got to be done at the same time that you're working up your strength, 
is you got to get that trigger squeeze where you're not worried about what you're hitting or where you're hitting. All you're focused on is just squeezing the trigger and trying to get the bow to go off and take you by surprise. Let's go into a little bit more detail about the surprise release. Uh, that's one that most people really struggle with this. And I'm going to give you a quick easy tip and you're not going to like it at first, but I think if you give it a chance, uh, I think you'll be surprised at what it does to your shooting. Get to full draw and have somebody squeeze the trigger for you. At first it's just going to you know, shock you terribly and you're going to hate it. But then little by little over time, it doesn't become such a shock anymore and you get into more of this sensation of it's just a surprise. You know, you know it's coming, it's going to happen, it's no big deal, then it you know, goes off and it feels really good. That's what it's supposed to feel like. That's what shooting a bow is supposed to feel like. Uh, one way we do it, we talk about every year, is using the um, back tension release like the Scott Archery Longhorn Hex. Uh, we use that quite a bit as a trainer during the summer. And again, that's just a release with no trigger. You pull and you turn your hand at full draw and then the, you know, the bow fires and you can't anticipate it. The two things that I do that helps to promote it is I pull hard against the back wall you know, fairly hard against the back wall at full draw. So I want to keep my draw length just a little tiny bit shorter maybe than it would be otherwise. Uh, the, other, the other thing I do is go a little bit deeper into the trigger. And you do that by shortening the stem of your release. If you look at this, you can see I've got this. This is the Scott Silverhorn. And I've got it shortened up to the absolute shortest setting that's available on this release. My goal is to contact the trigger deeper into my index finger than I would otherwise. The deeper I go into my index finger, again, the less sensitive my finger seems to be to feeling that squeezing sensation. Uh, so the, the shot is more likely to take me by surprise. So the combination of having somebody trigger the shot for you and then switching over where you're pulling hard against the valley and going deep in the trigger, uh, those are all things that hopefully can get you past that, that I don't know, you can call it target panic, uh, whatever it is. but Commanding the trigger is what gets you in trouble as an archer. When you're giving the now command inside your head, then you're constantly trying to do it when the pin is on the spot. And something happens, some kind of disconnect occurs in your central nervous system where your body doesn't even want you to get to that spot anymore. And you start locking up, you start twitching, you start double clutching the, the shot and it just all kinds of bad stuff happens. So getting away from that, uh, the best way that I know how is, is to learn how to do a surprise release. So I'll, I'll pull one off here for you. Uh, but this is all I'm going to talk about today. I had a few other things I was going to discuss, but I'm getting a little, a little long-winded here. I'm going to come back next week and talk some more about how I set the bow up, some of the accessories I use, and you know why I, I feel like my setup is perfect for a whitetail hunter. But let me get a couple surprise shots off here and show you what that looks like, and then uh, I'll close it up after that. deep into the trigger. If you can see, I can stretch my finger way up there. My hand shoots back, the bow jumps forward, but if you're truly making a surprise release, it will just come back on its own and set on your, on your shoulder, your hand will. So try one more here. Okay, so I'm pulling back pretty, pretty solidly into the, into the wall. Now I'm going to reach way forward with my finger, get deep into the trigger. Before I know it, that thing's gone and my hand is sitting back on my shoulder. So that's where I'm going to leave you this week. Like I said, there's lots of stuff we can talk about with bows and shooting bows. And I'm not the world's greatest expert on it, but fortunately for me, I know of people who are the world's greatest experts on this stuff. So I'm constantly picking their brains. So I'm just going to pass along the things that I've learned over the years that have helped me uh, to shoot better. And uh, hopefully that'll help you as well. So that's it. I'll see you right back here again uh, next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail, and remember to always dream big.